Let's take a look at the standard form for the equation of a hyperbola first centered at the origin. Now again, these are going to look really sort of threatening at first, but the thing to do is just not to uh, panic and don't take it all in at once. Let's just take a look at the equation here. And we see that basically this looks like an ellipse equation, except now there's a minus sign here. And similarly here, when these things are switched, then we see the minus sign here. So the A is always going to be hooked up with the positive term, whether it's an x or a y. That's an important thing to notice. The vertices, if we have um, the x coming first, the vertices are going to be along the x-axis. If the y comes first, the vertices are going to be on the y-axis. The foci, which are the points that we were talking about earlier for the constant difference, turn out to actually now be, remember, with the ellipse, it was a squared minus b squared. Now notice we switch again, and we see a squared plus b squared. And then the covertices are precisely the, the values that are associated with, with b. And then the asymptotes, which are these new objects, we didn't have asymptotes for the ellipse, but now we do, uh, are given by plus or minus b over a, x in this case, or y equals plus or minus a over b, x in this case. There's also some other objects we can talk about. We can talk about the length of the um, transverse axis, which is going to be just double the a and the length of the conjugate axis, which we'll see in a second, which is twice b. All right, let's see these things in action. There's way too much information here, but when we look at examples, all of a sudden things will begin to slowly fall into place. It's just practice, really. That's all it is, it's just practice. Let's see if we can now express uh, the equation for this hyperbola. All right, so there's a few things that I notice here. You can see that I've drawn in, in purple, the, um, the asymptotes. So this, this hyperbola wants to head toward those asymptotes. Now, we can see also <clears throat> that, in fact, the vertices are located right here. That's these values right here, the turning points, if you will, of the hyperbola. And so since they lie along the x-axis, that tells me that I'm going to start with x squared. So I'm going to have x squared divided by, well, I take a look at one of these vertices, so in this case this one, which is 1, 2, 3, so 3, and I square it. So I write this x squared over 3 squared, which is 9. Minus, because remember now it's a hyperbola, y squared. And now how am I going to find the, the co-vertex? Well, the co-vertices are pretty easy to find. Well, that's not true. They're not easy to find, but they're neat to look at. Here's what you do. You take a look at the asymptotes. And what you do is you run, in this case, vertical lines that just are tangent to the hyperbola at the vertices. So you go straight up like this. And see how they're going to actually hit the asymptotes at points? If we now connect the intersection points like this, we form a perfect rectangle. And the height of that here actually is going to be the value for b. And this point, these points here, the intersection with the y axis, are called the co vertices. These are the co-vertices. So in this case, I see the co-vertex is 2. I square it, I get 4, and I always set it equal to 1. And there is the equation for this particular hyperbola. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Let's find the equation of the hyperbola that's centered at 0, 0, and has vertex at 0, 10, and focus at 0, 14. So how are we going to do this? Again, a little Sketch goes a long way. OK, center is going to be here. The one vertex is at 0, 10. Ah, 0, 10, that's on the y-axis. Do you see that? Way up here. Let's put 10 here, which means I'm going to have one, since it's centered at the origin, I'm going to have one at negative 10. And the focus is at 0, 14, which is up here a little bit. So here's the focus, which means the other focus will be down here. And so this sort of gives me a sense of what the picture's going to look like. It's going to sort of go up and down. So this hyperbola has its ups and downs. <laughs> all right, all right, stop it. Anyway, this is a very rough sketch, not at all designed to be accurate, but it's designed to help us. You could even imagine putting in the asymptotes if you wanted to, but there you have it. All right, so this immediately tells me that we're going to start with a y squared, because you see how we're going up and down now. We're crossing the y-axis, so I'm going to have a y squared, so that picture already helps me, divided by, well, I just have to look at this length. So I look at the, one of the, the vertices, which I know 1 is 10, and so I've got 
this 10 squared, which is 100. Now a minus, and now I'm going to look at the x variable, so I have x squared, divided by, oh, now I need to know b. I need to know the co. I need to know the co-vertex. How am I going to find that? Well, you have to remember that c identity, which says that the focus is equal to the sum of the squares of the vertex and co-vertex. So what I see here is that the focus, which is 14 squared, so I square the focus, and that's going to equal a squared, which we know to be one, uh, 10 squared, which is 100, plus b squared. And that's exactly what I want. So I want to find b squared. And so if I solve this, what do I see? I see 196 equals 100 plus b squared, which means that b squared equals 96. Now you might say, hey, I need to take you know, square root of both sides, plus or minus square root. But no, because remember, actually, in this formula, I want b squared. So in fact, I can just write in 96. And we set that equal to 1. We set it and forget it, because that, in fact, is the equation for this particular hyperbola.